All right, thank you very much for the opportunity to present today. I'm, I'm excited to show you what, uh, what we've built already and, and what we would like to do in the future. Uh, first of all, I wanna give a big shout out to everybody who's contributed in some way to this project. Uh, some of these faces are familiar to you. Raja is a fourth year, Natasha is a fourth year medical student who had, uh, spent a lot of time in uh, surgical interest groups. Uh, maybe you know Simon Chen, who's a PATH fellow. But then I also have been very fortunate enough to work with a couple of undergraduates, Mac from Stanford, Harris from uh, UC Berkeley. And then uh, Christian is a graduate of engineering at University of California, Santa Cruz. So let me first give you an over, overview of why I came up with this project. So imagine a, 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 a team going out on a donor run they, uh, in the middle of the night, they have to assess a donor. They open up the abdomen, they look at the liver and, and they're not quite sure about the quality. It's, it looks a little bit fatty. And as many of you may know, uh, there's a correlation between fatty livers and uh, poor outcomes in uh, liver transplantation. So they decide they wanna do a biopsy. They get a biopsy, but now it's in the middle of the night. And there's a question whether or not pathology is even available. If, they're, if they are available, they often have to drive in uh, quite a distance and then you have to wait for a while for the actual read. Um, and then one other issue is that there's actually good data to show that the reads by the pathologists are often quite variable and, and can uh, um, differ from pathologist to pathologist. And this may even be worse when we go to smaller hospitals uh, where they have less experience uh, um, looking at pathology slides for donors. So I imagined a different way to do this. Uh, one would be have a point of care device portable that we could bring along in the donor runs that could take a picture, an image of this through the microscope, analyze it, and within a few minutes, tell me what percentage of the slide is composed of fat globules. And then maybe it can even give me more information that would uh, that'd be more specific, maybe a distribution of those fat vacuoles by size. Uh, you may know that uh, the larger vacuoles or, uh, or fat globules are thought to correlate even more so with poor outcomes. And then, so within about 10 minutes, you might have an answer and decide whether or not to use this liver. And then you bring back this liver back to our institution and you have your A team begin to put it in. Here you have Dr. Brubaker and Dr. Than. So overview, uh, the goal was to build a point of care portable device that acquires images through a microscope, analyzes them using artificial intelligence based algorithms and quantifies the degree of steatosis on the liver slides. To do this, we had three specific aims. First was to build a cloud interface capable of processing and analyzing the images. It turns out it's a little bit easier to do some of the software development in the cloud. Uh, but we can upload the images into the Google Cloud and in the Google Cloud, we can actually run several software algorithms and develop the algorithms to see if they're working. Two, we wanted to build a device capable of acquiring the images uh, through the microscope. And then three, we want to en en enable this device to process the images, analyze them and, and give us some information. So just a little bit of background, I've presented this before. We, we previously uh, showed how we could develop an algorithm, an AI algorithm that's good at labeling the fat uh, globules on a slide. So on the left, you have the pathologist labeling, sort of, uh, sort of training, and then on the right, you have our AI algorithm uh, labeling the flat, fat globules. Uh, we published a version, early version of this algorithm in collaboration with uh, Dr. Lippard's lab over in bioengineering. Lin Fang uh, is the Stanford PhD student that collaborated with us on this. Uh, he has since graduated. Uh, and uh, Raja has presented this at, at several national meetings, including uh, the Pacific Coast Surgical and the American Transplant Congress. So first, building a cloud-based end-to-end platform for real-time analysis. So you can imagine that we'd have a computer that, that has the images on it. We want to up, upload these images through a, a web-based application where you can browse through the, the slot pictures of your slides securely and uh, upload that to the Google storage, run the algorithms on, on, the, on the Google Cloud, 
Uh, that involves tiling with the slides. You wanna break up the slides. These are large images. You wanna break it up into 256 by 256 pixels. And then running that through the AI algorithm. The, a, the output of that a, AI algorithm is a mask. And in the mask, white uh, represents fat globules and black is everything else. So then the computer can basically divide the white area by the total area to give you a percentage steatosis. And then you need some way of feeding this information back to the user, either on the screen or, or through an e email interface. So the next slide, I'm gonna show you an example of this in, in real action. Here we have a slide labeled test two. You can see it has quite a bit of fat content. Uh, now what we wanna do is uh, choose it from the directory, load it up, upload it to the cloud, Once it's uploaded to cloud, the computer, the cloud can process it, sends you an email back. And in the email, you have a, a picture of the slide, and then it gives you some sort of some information. In this case, it's giving you the percent steatosis in each of the tiles for that slide. And then it can also it also can give you back the mask. So here's here's the mask again of all the tiles and this histogram uh, represents the fat content in each of these tiles. This can get much more sophisticated uh, in the future. And we may even look for other characteristics of, of poor outcomes. Uh, and then it also tells you that here that this was 27.5% uh, fat content. So the next step was the, the development of the portable all-in-one device. Uh, and this would be a device that does not rely on the internet doesn't, and actually is quite a bit more secure because all the data would stay on the device. Uh, so back in October, 2019, before I got the grant for this uh, project, uh, we submitted a, a provisional patent through the Office of Technology here at Stanford. And this was the original sketch. Uh, the device is represented by this dotted line. It, takes a, it can take a picture through a microscope. This picture is stored, the image is stored on the device in the RAM. It's processed by the graphics processing unit. These are the, the chips that are, that are required to run AI algorithms. And then it gives some sort of output, 40% steatosis. Uh, this non-provisional uh, application, be, I mean, this provisional application became a non-provisional application a year later, so in October of 2020, and now it's being reviewed by the US Patent Office. Uh, so making that a reality uh, required coming up with computer-aided design of, of various device prototypes. Uh, we purchased uh, several of these small computers that contain a GPU, the graphic processing unit, that's capable of running AI algorithms. This is probably about three inches by three inches. Um, it gets quite hot, so you can, it requires these cooling fans. And I think it, actually when you're running the AI algorithms, it, gets very hot and we may have to add a fan to that. And then we built some prototypes of this device and uh, the prototype uh, development has been facilitated by using 3D printing. This first prototype was uh, printed with the help of a connection that I got through Dr. Gertner. Uh, and, uh, and then this is sort of this uh, computer board fits inside the device here. Uh, the prototyping uh, has gotten more rapid now uh, because using some of the seed money, I purchased a 3D printer. And just so you can see this in live action, you can see it's printing out. It's actually quite fun to see this, this thing sort of rise off the platform over time, but it takes a long time. So this, this prototype took about 30 hours to print, um, keeping my fingers crossed that it, it didn't uh, stop working overnight. It's still not the same as printing a color, color laser printer manuscript. Uh, we had to go through lots of trial and error. So the nice thing about the 3D printing is that we can build several prototypes and, and experiments with different things. So one of the experiments was 
you can see here there's this threading here and the camera would lie down in the middle here and the idea is that we have another piece that fits in that threading and that to change the focal length for the camera you can turn this in or screw it in or screw it out uh, and then you can see how that would work on the microscope so here's uh, a microscope again something i was able to purchase with the c grant uh, the device fits on top of the microscope and is supposed to take a picture through there. And then you can adjust the focal length by rotating this piece. Uh, there are several problems with this uh, prototype. This is quite heavy. Hanging off the microscope is probably not ideal. With the 3D printing, we weren't able to get this to work too well with the, the threading. It, it wasn't so smooth. And uh, the camera that we initially used in this prototype was not sensitive enough. So it, it, it was great in room light, but pulling light through the microscope, it, it, we didn't get great images. Um, so this, this, this image, uh, not so good. It took us an hour and a half to get, but you, I think I finally concluded that the camera wasn't sensitive enough to load light situations. So I, I invested in, in a new camera um, and we made some design changes. So I'm gonna show you a videotape here. So now we separated out the camera case uh, encasement and, and connected to a ribbon cable to the device. Uh, and we have the new camera here. And now you can see I'm trying to focus the microscope so we can see if we can get an image here. And voila, we can see. Uh, that you can see the fact globules quite nicely on this image. So now uh, I hit the keyboard, it takes a picture of this and stores it in memory. And now uh, we take that image and now we're gonna process it in real time on the device itself. So again, here's the device, this is a screen, we're gonna load up the image And then it gets it gets analyzed on the device, not the cloud, so no internet connection needed. And wait for it. Wait for it. You get a nice mask. And so now the computer can take this information and give and tell us what percent steatosis is there. Um, so again, the nice thing is that this is not connected to the internet. It was able to do all the processing on this. Most of our desktops wouldn't be able to do this processing because it, they re it requires this special chip that, that can do parallel processing, the GPU. So uh, this is sort of a concept of what the final output might look like actually, where we have a, a dashboard telling us what the percentage of fat globules are, some information about the patient, maybe some specific information about the distribution of the, of the fat on the slide or by size of the globules, uh, possibly compare it to what the pathologist read. Um, generally, the pathologists read a higher number than what we're actually calculating. And then uh, uh, Mac also came up with this concept of the heat map where you, you can scan the whole slide and look if, if the fat is evenly distributed across the whole slide. So now uh, we've almost come around and built an all-in-one platform where we can acquire the images, process the slides, put them through the AI algorithm, come up with a mask, and then give us a nice output here. So we obviously have a lot of work to make this whole interface smoother, but I think that's mostly software. I'm, I'm pretty pleased that we've gotten most of the hardware put together now. Uh, the device is now listed at the Office of Technology, so advertising for potential uh, companies to consider licensing it. Uh, I think in the future, we wanna look at um, other ways we could build similar devices to look at other things. So one thing was to look at other features on path slides. Raja got an AOA grant to look at neuroendocrine tumors and maybe look at 
uh, like identify mitoses. Also want to uh, seek some additional funding. Some of the funding that I want to seek is to look at early allograft outcomes. So see how closely our assessment of the steatosis correlates with early allograft uh, outcomes after liver transplantation. I have a feeling we're going to show a tighter correlation even than what the pathologist reads show because I think their, their assessments are very variable where I think the AI algorithms can be very objective and very consistent. So just for uh, complete acknowledgements, I got a lot of help from people in other departments also. Serena Tan and John Higgins in pathology have, have given a lot of thought to this project. James Zhao from Stanford Biomedical Data, and Data Science also has helped out. Again, thank you for the funding from the Technology C grant. And I also received uh, some uh, Google Cloud grant funding for this. Thank you. I'm happy to take any questions.